Hello everyone. So this is going to be an update video that we weren't planning to make. Uh, we're in front of a noisy road, but we don't really have any other option right now. So hopefully the sound is going to be okay in this video. Uh, as you can see from the title, uh, COVID has pretty much derailed our planned trip. In our previous Q&A, we mentioned that on the 5th of January, we were supposed to go to Argentina, mainly to head to Patagonia and do some hiking. But we're not in Argentina right now. We're in Carol's bedroom mm -hmm. in Rio still. So yeah, we just wanted to explain what happened with uh, COVID and also go through like the process of having to deal with the flights, right? Since we didn't get on the flights, probably some of you are gonna be traveling or are worried about traveling and how to deal with flights if something goes wrong because of COVID. So we're gonna cover that in this video. So basically at the end of last year, we decided to finally have more of a, a normal year, right? After two years of not really seeing family properly and stuff. So on Christmas, we met with our family, just a family gathering, mm -hmm. both, both families and that went great. And then on New Year's, we had a small gathering with friends, probably about 10 people. Yeah. Yeah, 10 people. And then after New Year's, uh, was it two days after, we had to do the, the PCR test mm -hmm. to be able to go to Argentina. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's when everything kind of went downhill. So in the morning of the PCR test, we were both fine. Yeah. And then I guess you can take it from here. Yeah, and then we went to the clinic to get the test done and we did it and just we were feeling good but then in the afternoon of that, that same day I started to feel a bit uh, weird uh, so I had like a, a mild sore throat and also body aches and I was feeling very tired and the sore throat is one of like the specific symptoms for this new uh, strain Omicron so we were already worried yeah I was worried but at the same time there is also like a, the influenza um, breakout here in Brazil everybody's caughting that as well so I thought maybe I just have the flu and yeah we just waited for the result and then the next day the result came and I was positive and Chris was negative and that day we separated I was like isolating in my room and he was with my family in the rest of the, the apartment and luckily I just had the mild symptoms uh, I had sore throat and bo uh, body aches headaches and I felt a bit tired, but that was just in the first two days. Then I was, uh, I felt that I was recovering. You had the loss of taste though, right? Yeah, for two days, I think. And, uh, and yeah, I think after two days, I was uh, only having sore throat and I felt it was getting better. And uh, so that was just uh, the mild symptoms. Uh, it wasn't very bad, actually. I think the worst part was to be isolating and for 10 days and not doing anything but i think two days after uh, i was isolated you started to feel some symptoms right yeah so i think you did the test on the monday mm -hmm. and then on the thursday i woke up and i had a bit of a, a sore throat but i'd been sleeping under the fan so i was unsure if i was paranoid i think that's happened to a lot of people during the pandemic right the anytime you get ill you're paranoid and think oh i've got covid so i couldn't tell if i was being paranoid or not and then after about two hours the sore throat pretty much went away but it was very dry i had a very dry throat and then the second day i was a bit more tired but and still a very dry throat and then carol's brother and mother were also sick so carol was isolating but we were kind of all feeling weird out there and they did uh, the COVID test and they both came back negative. So we thought like they just had a flu because they had more like flu-like symptoms like sneezing and stuff. And yeah, I thought I was just being paranoid. But then the third day I woke up and I just felt like complete garbage, like zero energy whatsoever. I was like a zombie. And I think I got up and I didn't even eat or anything. I just went straight back to bed, which I never do with like any illness. Usually when I get up, I, I get up. So I went back to bed, I took a nap because I felt like I hadn't slept at all. And then when I woke up, I still felt really bad. And I was thinking, oh, there's something wrong here. This doesn't feel like a cold or anything else. So I went to get tested 
the testing sites were all uh, packed, like hours of queues. Um, you could probably see this is happening everywhere in the world, pretty much for the same reason probably everybody met for New Year's. People wanted uh, a normal year finally and then yeah this outbreak happened. It's happening all over in many countries. So I did the test and then I came back positive. So this is about six or seven days after your positive result. Yeah, I think it was uh, six, six days after. And then we finally started to isolate together. You came to the room and yeah. we were isolating in my room and the rest of the family were in the other rooms because I think they got the influenza flu or something. Yeah, so like we said, Carol tested positive on the third and we were supposed to get on the flight on the fifth, right? And we couldn't, so we changed the flight initially to the 19th. But then uh, we were worried about even being able to pass the test to get on that flight because it's a P PCR test, not antigen. And PCR, it's a, I think it's like super sensitive, the test. So even if you're not contagious at all, which you won't be probably two, two weeks, two, three weeks later, it can still track like the virus in your system. And obviously if we get a positive test on that, then we can't fly again. So we were kind of all confused if we're gonna cancel the trip we didn't really know what to do and right now as of now we've actually pushed it back to the 21st yeah just to give ourselves a few extra days obviously because i got sick even later than carol like six seven days later that means we're even more worried now because she's probably definitely going to have it out of her system we think but there's we don't know about me because um it's close i think i should we do yeah, have friends like a week later they're negative mm -hmm. yeah because uh, i think we don't know when he got it uh, maybe he got it from me or like in the first days before i tested or maybe he got from the same person in the new, new year's, year's. Uh, celebration so we can't really know when you actually got the virus but we are hoping that we're gonna get the negative results to be able to, be able to fly uh, because uh, like, we, like we said, um, we were not sure what to do if we, we should cancel the, the, the trip but then we think we, we would uh, lose more than a thousand dollars just on flights All the flights, yeah And You should probably explain the fun you had with the flights not been a not been a fun time trying to change these no, flights. I spent many hours of my quarantine, many just, days, uh, dealing with that, trying to deal with that. So um, let's get to the the cancellation reschedule part. Uh, we had five flights in total because uh, one to go there, one to come back, and then three uh, just traveling inside Argentina, and uh, two of them with a. One company was called Fly Bondi, and the other one was Go from Brazil. I was able to do uh, like to to cancel one of them and to get a full refund, and the other one to reschedule with no fees, nothing. It was pretty much straightforward to get that done. Um, and yeah, it was just I spent like I don't know maybe half a day dealing with that, and everything was fine. But the other three flights, it was a bit of a pain in the neck. The because, internal ones, right? Yeah, uh, it was with the uh, Aerolíneas Argentinas. So I spent, I literally spent a week uh, talk, trying to talk to them. And uh, like they have a phone and I was never able to get uh, to get someone to answer. And they also have a, like a WhatsApp account and I was trying to talk to them. And then uh, like they would reply just a day later and then yeah, you'd leave one message mm -hmm. and then the day after would be one reply from them and then you'd reply yeah. and then it would be another day yet. So yeah, just a simple and little and conversation. I, mm, taking forever and I think they had different people getting my messages. So like uh, I would explain what I wanted to do and then they were like, okay, hello, what, what can I help you? And I'm like, I just told yeah. you what I wanted no, the, to do. The worst thing that happened was you did the whole thing in English. Yeah, because I don't... Pretty much finalized the whole conversation of what we wanted to do. And then at the end, the guy says, are you Brazilian? And then she said, yes. yes. <laughs> and then he just passed us to this new guy in mm -hmm. Portuguese and you had to start all from scratch once again. Yeah, so it took us literally seven days. Yeah, so there was a day that I, I was able to call them 
and then I waited for an hour and 20 minutes to talk to someone there and then somebody finally picked up and then uh, I was almost finishing all uh, all the things that I need to do I was able to reschedule the flight and then I was giving my credit card details because I needed to change uh, to pay for the fee and when I was like in the last part of the the credit card the, number the number yeah the, the the line fell the line fell so I was like very very angry and then I tried to call again two hours and nothing and then yeah so it took a lot of time for me to get all the things sorted for the flights now we have everything sorted uh, we have all this fl the flights rescheduled and uh, we had to pay for this uh, three ones I think for the uh, Aerolíneas Argentinas yeah, we yeah. had to pay to change those flights. I think it's twenty-five dollars per flight per person. Yeah, and then the difference because uh, as we are closer to the flight date, the flights are ex more expensive. So I had to pay for that too, and uh, yeah, it was a bit of a mess. But luckily, I was doing nothing, like because I was just yeah. isolated and watching series. And, Maybe it was uh, good; it gave you something to do. Yeah, but I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the the headache with the the flights. So you might go through that. Obviously, the issue with this trip was that we had five flights. Mm -hmm. So usually we don't have that. We just we never really have internal flights in a lot of the countries that we go to. So normally we'd just be dealing with like one or two flights, not five. So that's why we had the big headache. And there's still the issue now that we don't even know if we're still able to go. So we're kind of here all anxious are, are we going to argentina or not are we gonna be able to pass the pcr test or not we also have the issue in brazil right now that there's a shortage of pcr tests because so many people have this uh omicron now that um yeah they're not testing a lot of normal people like us you either have to be in hospital now or be a health worker in a lot of the places but we found some private clinic that yeah. i think we have to pay a lot more but it seems to be guaranteed that we'll be able to do the test there, so... I hope so. <laughs> yeah, so right now it's just fingers crossed because this Patagonia trip has been one of the things that we've really wanted to do. We've been really looking forward to it, finally doing something different than uh, like a tropical travel like we keep doing during this uh, COVID pandemic. So it was finally going to be something different, but yeah, we just don't know. And this is the reality of what can happen. Uh, Carol posted on Instagram about us getting COVID and so many people replied back saying that they got it uh, during this period yeah. and a lot of people said they're either stuck in countries that they travel to and can't get back home because of this or they had to cancel their trip so a lot of people are going through this and um, yeah i think if covid's around next new year's and it's still like this these kind of variants that spread quickly i don't think we're going to plan anything so close to new year's because it's probably going to be like an annual outbreak yeah um yeah it's just crazy everything like like i said here in rio it's a it's a very bad situation because we literally know more than i don't know 20 people from different social circles that they all are positive right now majority of our friends in uh, the states yeah, in the u.s yeah. all all got covid all the ones that hadn't got covid these past two years my friends pretty much have covid now and here just people getting it again people that hadn't had it so yeah it's spreading like crazy the only positive side is this uh this variant isn't so deadly really so mm -hmm. if this was deadly we'd be in serious trouble right because everybody's getting it so that's the good thing um uh, it still was pretty hard though it was like a very bad flu i think yeah and i, I never have had flu it's like i, I yeah, probably had too. like three years ago but this was uh very annoying i i'd say because it was i was very tired and um, no no energy or anything it's actually good that you tested positive because you never know hers could have been delayed like mine and then we'd probably been yeah. on the flight and we'd have just been in patagonia and argentina this whole time like sick because there's no way when we were ill we were going to be able to do like hikes yeah. in high altitudes so it was better to push it back anyway. The symptoms were like, uh, like I said, annoying, but it was not that bad. Uh, it was just mild symptoms, luckily, uh, because uh, yeah, we both had uh, three doses of the vaccine, so I, I really think that helped as well. And yeah, it's just uh, 
annoying because now we don't know if we're gonna travel or anything and um, yeah but just, luckily we're healthy that's the most yeah. important yeah now we're, we're fine yeah so yeah this was a just a update video kind of long update i guess but just to explain everything that's been going on and also to explain why there's no videos from argentina yet so hopefully very soon we do get to head to argentina it'll be next week right and we can already start posting videos from there and if not we'll just have to wait for the, the trip after that right yeah we'll see but if we can't go we'll just do something here in brazil i think i don't know we'll just we'll have to see but we're gonna keep updating you guys on instagram that's where we usually post things more up to date and then yeah we'll see just hope we can go to argentina yeah instagram is where we put the more recent updates in so yeah if you want to check that out to find out if we if we made it or not and carol also had another tip regarding the flights right yeah so i noticed that uh, when you buy flights that there's, there's usually the promotional fare and uh, like a few other ones are the most expensive ones and from what i saw uh, the most expensive one usually has the cancellation um, option for free and uh, so that's an option if you don't want to risk losing all the money but at the same time you're going to pay more for that uh, flight yeah if every time we're going to be flying we buy this expensive ticket yeah it's going to cost a lot a as well lot, yeah, yeah. But, but maybe if you're just on your one-time annual trip and risking it's not an option it's better to just pay a bit more Mm -hmm. and at least be able to get all your money back if it goes wrong uh -huh. and also just read all the like uh, the cancellation policies before you buy because some some airline companies have some uh, policies and the other ones have different policies so you just need to check all the information and also for accommodations websites like airbnb i think we had one uh, airbnb booked and we just lost all the money and uh, I think booking.com, the, they have a different cancellation policy, which seems to be a bit better. But yeah, you just need to be sure to read all the, the policies and everything. Just make sure you won't lose a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it for this update. We hope that all you guys are healthy out there and hope that this last outbreak didn't affect you very much. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been affected as well uh, yeah just write down in the comments if it screwed a lot of your plans up like us yeah. Um, yeah hope it didn't though so yeah thanks for watching as well Thank and you. fingers crossed like i said <laughs> bye guys bye